All right, now we've hit the deep end. We're at the topic that has tons of speculation. We can analyze it all day. It's very fascinating. I'm talking about the anatomy, the physiology of Gojira. Gojira has been described as a transitional form between marine and terrestrial creature by in-movie Dr. Yamane. We as fans and moviegoers classify it as a kaiju, more so as a daikaiju, and using our known science, we can safely speculate that it may be a theropod or pseudosuchian, considering its amphibious nature. And personally, considering the definitions of kaiju and daikaiju, I would refer to Godzilla as being a daikaiju. And yeah, if you want to learn more about that, I made a video about what a kaiju is, so we'll check that out somewhere here, or type on YouTube, what is a kaiju? For further clarification, Kojira appears to be akin to prehistoric Mesozoic reptilian carnivorous dinosaurs, such as the Allosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex in appearance, standing on two legs, though not digitigrade, but rather plantigrade legs like ours. Though early conceptions can't be blamed, as many early conceptions and drawings of animals made mistakes with leg structures as well as many more anatomy presentational errors. But actually in this case, they were aware of the quote-unquote flat feet, seemingly like those of an elephant walking about, which is our largest land creature today. So they just pushed on that idea. It has been mentioned to be a mix between a Stegosaurus and a Tyrannosaurus rex, but that seems a little bit ridiculous, as the breeding of the two wouldn't be very probable in nature in the first place, considering one was a carnivorous species and the other a herbivorous. And even if they would breed, the appearance would be much different and immensely smaller. But of course, with the addition of radiation and the drop of fantasy, who knows? The Skinner hide is covered in scales or bumps, and the bumpy nature was seemingly due to reactions from radiation from the bomb explosion. But if indeed it's more warty in nature, that well puts it more closer related to the class of animals of amphibian, with creatures such as toads and salamanders, rather than the scaly skin of a reptile, such as lizards and crocodilians. So they may actually just be radiation exposed deformed scales, or scales more of the appearance of those of crocodiles, as were the design intentions, therefore Gojira belonging more in the reptile class. Either way, I'd say Gojira belongs in the cold-blooded section of the animal kingdom's core data phylum category. Now the brain, or brains. Hmm, now this gets interesting. The brain size was indeed discussed in the third Godzilla movie, the one with King Kong, as they were comparing their brains and intelligence levels. And they stated how tiny Godzilla's brain is. But I'd have to argue that, because if Gojira's brain would have been so tiny, with such a simple and instinctive mind, then the evolved flat-footed legs would be really questionable, as digitigrade legs were more built for speed, and plantigrade legs, such as Godzilla's, were through evolutionary structure more designed for balance, and so for creatures of often higher intelligence. Or this guy just pulled all of this out of his head, wrongly comparing to the walnut-sized brains of certain dinosaurs and considering, spoilers, the Godzillas of the first two films were not properly researched, as the first Godzilla was disintegrated and the second one buried in ice and snow. Godzilla has been shown to speak, which of course can be ignored, or re-evaluated on the level of intelligence. If on a topic of ignoring, well then we have to mention just how nimble Godzilla gets, becoming very light-footed, even expressing martial arts, and even displaying comical jumps in a victory dance, as well as a handshake. And he's also been shown to laugh. If you want to take that as official Godzilla lore, then well that accumulates to quite an intelligent sentient being. In Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, there's a second brain revealed in the tale as scientists found that within the baby Godzilla. Really interesting idea that makes sense and relates to cephalopod simpler brain organs, especially considering both are marine creatures. Now if this is really part of the lore, it makes for a very dangerous tale particularly with Shin Godzilla. According to some illustrations, its brain appears to be quite large, actually huge considering the size of the creature compared to us. And there's many other examples of Godzilla intelligently figuring things out. Keep in mind there are at least 14 different representations of Godzilla out there, some of which fans may recognize as the Showa or First Era. I hope I pronounced this somewhat correct. Heisei Era. 
TriStar era, different series, the MonsterVerse, Toho's reboot, and there are more. So there isn't just one lore, there are a few lores and they overlap with one another. So back to trying to break down the anatomy, let's take a look at the ears. Godzilla did have visible ear organs, particularly in the earlier versions, which later got possibly less pronounced like those of crocodiles. In the first movie, it was 50 meters tall, 164 feet. But by the Shin Godzilla movie of 2016, Godzilla was 118.5 meters tall, not feet. That's actually 389 feet. And according to some speculations, even almost reaching 150,000 metric tons. It's common for depictions to grow on the big screen. As our society understanding of the world develops, films such as this nicely reflect the human notion of the world and the power that has grown and developed throughout our pretty recent history. Also, our buildings grow in height, so, so do our fantastical creatures have to. And then there's also the competition between the United States and Japan, from fans to movies to society, to who's gonna make the greatest, biggest on-screen monster. And I've gotta say Japan wins. Well, with Shin Godzilla, with 118 meters tall, so it's no doubt the tallest Godzilla, mass might be questionable but surely beats Zilla, still remains a good competitor for the latest 2014 American Godzilla. Looking back at the Godzilla conceptions, it always had the comparatively large eyes, which made it kind of more scary and more relatable. But this also varies by size per movie. In newer films, such as the 2014 Godzilla, the US went with smaller, more realistic eyes based on the creature's size and nature, as did Japan, clearly illustrating through its speedy evolution how large eyes served better within the underwater environment and had to be adjusted for not just terrestrial sight, but for a towering height, while having to anatomically compensate for other developments. The interior biology is mostly unknown, but can be trusted to be speculated with what we know of with similar anatomical structures of animals today, such as crocodilians, lizards, as well as a few conclusions we've hit upon with dinosaurs. That said, there are still factors that must be considered, such as unique organs, multiple of others, and some being enlarged. Tons of energy proceed and are given birth to by these organs. Therefore, the heart and lungs, for instance, must be extremely powerful. Maybe all that exhaust energy is stored into a particular gland which feeds into Godzilla's attacks. From the outside, we can observe a little of how the creature's deadly mist correlates with the strong glow of the backplate slash horns. There are many illustrations of Godzilla online and in books but I wouldn't put my full trust into what's official and canon and what's not. With my own quick speculation, I would imagine there to be a gland or glands that hold the fluid used during the spray attack. This fluid is either radioactive or slightly radioactive that is then somehow charged with more radioactive energy or heated by the use of the bony back forms. Hence, we see them glow before the powerful chemical is projected directly and rapidly in a misty form. This attack has the ability to melt, set aflame, and even to explode. That is why I reached the conclusion that it is either extremely radioactive in nature or has another very deadly combination of chemicals that evoke an extreme reaction when heated or charged with electricity or possibly even some agitating microscopic compounds that when in contact with the gland's fluids create for a powerful plasma-like acidic or combination of both attack. And of course, we know that radiation is all around there as well and most likely plays a huge part within this attack. Now, as mentioned prior, speculation can go on for a long time here. But Godzilla's spouting attack also evolved and changed throughout the movie, starting with the sort of misty attack, evolving to rays and beams, and then eventually to lasers. The tail is muscular and strong and prehensile to some degree. Speaking of the tail, in the Shin Godzilla version, again, spoilers if you haven't seen Godzilla, skip over a few seconds. All right, there's a face on the tip of the tail. This also eventually has a firing attack, and there are theories surrounding this tail as being an exhaust area of corpses, a reproductive system, a new offspring development, or a regeneration ability that is attempting to recreate the form. 
or this could be part of something entirely different within the creature's numerous evolutionary stages. Though this isn't really a video about Shin Godzilla, I personally speculate that they will be smaller creatures that will respond to the hive mind of the main Godzilla, if even it's still necessary at that point. And these creatures have been evolved into existence to better deal with the diversity of the human military. Basically, it realized it's one huge target for advanced explosives, hence the next strategy of action is to spread out and better target the enemy, hence the more humanoid, intelligent looking forms. There are different opinions of this recreation of our beloved Daikaiju. Remember, I can make a whole separate in-depth video about Shin Godzilla if you so wish. I refer to Godzilla by name or as IT. It is overall unclear what sex Godzilla is. Various lore takes upon or hints at various conclusions. I stick with Godzilla being a hermaphrodite, having both sexual organs or having the ability to adapt to having the necessary sexual organs for survival. I see it unnecessary for this creature and scientifically looking how long Godzilla has been around and keeps coming back, if it indeed is the same individual, it makes sense that the mysterious egg and baby Godzilla, Manila or Minya can still be explained, so I see it unnecessary to place particular sex upon it. Nonetheless, expanding on Godzilla's nature, it has proven to be a very caring and good parent. Godzilla has been mentioned to live up to 2,000 years, but that still remains a very, very uncertain subject. Now, unsurprisingly, scientists do say that Godzilla could never have or never will exist, not on, on this planet and this atmosphere. The largest known dinosaur is Patagotitan Mayorum, which reached 122 feet, 37 meters, standing over 70 feet tall, still being comparatively small compared to Godzilla. Yet the weight of this dinosaur and mass was distributed to four limbs. It has been stated that the interior body heat itself would be enough to destroy Godzilla's organs, though that's what possibly possibly is stored in and charges the jagged back plates, which allow for the steam attack. Possibly adding to the realism, those dorsal horns did increase in size for the most part and of course became sharper as that just looks cooler. Also the osteoderms or scales covering the entire body help to exert and or store heat and radiation. It is speculated that when aggressively active, Godzilla would exert enough energy to power a small Town. town. Paleontologist Mike P. Taylor claims that the limb cartilage in the Godzilla-sized animal would be crushed, and I quote, like overripe watermelons, by its own body weight. The bones and cartilage would have to be of a much stronger density or type of material to withstand pressure from the mass of flesh and muscles and the forces that link with them. The bones would have to be extremely thick. And come on, adding to this creature being more fantastical, its skin or osteoderms can withstand missile attacks. And more. Now on the topic of gills, Godzilla is mentioned to be able to breathe underwater. Some, particularly later versions, reveal large scales that hint at being possible gills on the neck. Again, Shin Godzilla, or the spore game to movie Godzilla, clearly answered this question. I would be happy with either conclusions, or even that later versions of Godzilla did in fact develop gills, whereas the original didn't, but it had the capability to hold its breath for very long periods periods such as whales do, or maybe more relatably, such as sea turtles do. And please let us know if you've enjoyed this part 2 episode out of 3 on all about Godzilla. And also please share your analysis and thoughts on its anatomy. Now prepare for part 3 where you will see similar beasts, strengths and weaknesses, and Godzilla's earned power level.